Hey guys, it's Bex. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be reading some new releases. These weren't as much anticipated releases for me because they are both books in series and I read both of the previous books really recently, but I'm still super excited to read them because they are both five star series for me so far and they're both fantasy romances so you can probably maybe guess what they are. The first one is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros and this just came out a little more than a week ago and I read the first one Fourth Wing last month in October and I absolutely loved it. I rated it five stars. I do have a reading vlog of me reading that as well. I will link it for you if you want to see my reactions. And ever since I read that book, I have been super excited to read this. I pre-ordered it while I was reading that book because I knew already that I was loving it. That is the first one. And the second one is A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. This came out like a month ago, maybe, and I literally mere hours ago finished reading the second book in the series, The Ballad of Never After, which are, I was just going to say which are right behind me. I was actually going to show it because for the first time ever, I tabbed a book. So still not a lot, but I, this was my first time tabbing a book, so I didn't want to go overboard and it was really fun. I really liked it. I used this kind of purpley color palette of tabs and then in the beginning of the book I just put my little like key so yeah I am planning on probably tabbing a curse for true love as well and maybe doing more like pink since it matches the vibe of the book but this is a Barnes and Noble exclusive edition and it's absolutely beautiful I'm obsessed without the dust jacket with and without but without is so pretty i love how it has the ballad of the archer and the fox on the front because if you don't read the series you would have no idea what this means and you'd be confused probably because it's not even the title of the book but this plays a very big role in the series since i just finished the ballad of never after like a couple hours ago earlier today i am going to be starting with this one in today's video and also because both of these books are like part of a series and it's just hard to explain the book without like giving spoilers on the previous books in the series. I am going to be doing some spoilers I think but also some spoiler free moments. So when there are spoilers I will definitely give you guys a warning when they are coming. But I also figured because most people probably won't be watching this video unless they've read the previous books in these series. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Yeah, that is the plan for today's video. I'm really excited. Probably the most excited I've been for a video in a long time. And without further ado, let's start reading A Curse for True Love. Oh, also, I wanted to show you guys my cute little bookmark that I got. I will try to remember where I got it and link it or something. If I don't, I'm sorry, I'm new with this YouTube thing, but it's so cute. Um, it has a little R on it for my name. And I thought it was more orange in the picture, but it's more like brown, orangey, but it's still really pretty. The first page says, for anyone who's ever hoped for a second chance. Oh, I love that. I'm so excited. breaking my heart.
liar. Oh. Little update for you guys. I'm on page 55, chapter six. So not very far in, like 10% of the way through, I would say. Can't really comment yet on how I'm liking this book specifically in terms of like in comparison to the other ones because it's so early on, but I'm irritated at what's happening right now. It's not what I want. And I guess I never explained what this book is about. If you guys do happen to be watching this and haven't read any of them yet, um, so it's part of the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy by Stephanie Garber, which is a spin-off trilogy from the Care of All series. And I always mention that because me having read the Care of All series first, I truly think that it helps you better understand Jax and not his background. Well, yeah, some of his background, but also just the fates and that aspect of the series because it doesn't go into too much detail in these books. But basically, this is a fantasy romance and this series is about Evangeline, who at the beginning of the first book, she had just found out that the boy she loved was marrying her sister-in-law, who she doesn't really get along with and she feels super betrayed and heartbroken and she thinks that he's being like cursed and he's under a spell and that's the only reason he's marrying her so she goes and does the only thing she can think of being desperate and goes to request the help of Jax the prince of hearts who is a fate and she asks for his help but you should never ask for a fate's help because it's always more than you bargain for and she learns that along the way. And he agrees to help her in exchange for three kisses from, not him, but from other people. Evangeline doesn't know yet. She kind of, you know, finds out along the way, but the kisses get her into situations, basically. And... Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. It's very like fairy tale esque, but it kind of makes you think like, is there gonna be a happily ever after? So it's almost like a darker fairy tale, if that makes sense. But Stephanie Garber's writing is just absolutely amazing and so magical. And there's like tiny dragons and different flavored water that is like luck and I don't know what the other ones are right now and they like bring you they make you feel lucky if you drink them and like little stuff like that that she just thinks of and I just absolutely love it but yeah that's about all I have to update you guys on I probably won't be reading any more tonight but I will definitely pick it up tomorrow and probably update you guys again tomorrow so I was just reading and wasn't planning on filming anything, but I'm on page 98 and I just got to the first chapter that is in Jack's POV, which is exciting. I do think I knew he had a POV in this book because I've heard people say it had multiple POVs. So I assumed he was one of them. I hoped he was and he is. And I just have a feeling that I'm gonna love his POV because he's just so mysterious and you never really know what he's thinking because he puts up a front, you know? So I just thought I'd film myself reading and maybe just this chapter at least, but chapter 11. chapter was only like four pages long but obviously we'll be getting Jax's POV every once in a while which is better than nothing. I'm gonna try to read like a hundred pages today but I'm already halfway there so it might be I might be able to read more than that. What is 
going on? <laughs> this is where you break free, he said softly. I don't want to, she said. guys it is like two days later since I last talked to you I am like 60% of the way through I keep wanting to say the Ballad of the Archer and the Fox because it's right on the front but no a curse for true love I'm on chapter 28 page 222 and I have a feeling that this is where it's really gonna start getting good and like wrapping everything up kind of because there's not that much left and because of what just happened basically i don't know but so far i am really really enjoying this book i would say i like it probably about equal to once upon a broken heart which i rated in five stars but i rated the ballad of never after like well five stars but it's like a six star book in my opinion so this one is about the same as the first one but still very very good absolutely loving it there have been a couple of moments now between jackson and evangeline in this book where it's just like i want to rip my head off basically <laughs> in a good way bad way i don't know it's all very confusing but i tabbed a little bit if you can see that i really don't know if you can see that very well but there have been very frustrating parts and I don't know, like the beginning of this book, because of what happened in the last book and how it ended, the first like 100 pages of this book weren't like my absolute favorite. But at the same time, I also get why Stephanie Garber did that because it basically just gave her a storyline for this book. Like, this is the storyline she chose, so she kind of had to do it like that. But still absolutely love her writing, love the world. I would love to live in this world that she has created. I guess now might be a good time to say a couple spoilery things. So, warning, I'll put it on the screen. Spoilers, skip to whatever time. So, what just happened is Evangeline went into the woods, the cursed forest, to find Apollo to tell him that she has seen Jax around. And when she's in there, she of course comes across Jax or he comes across her. And now they just wandered through the through the cursed forest and now are at the um, the inn, what's it called? Ye old brick inn at the end of the forest for wayward travelers and adventurers. And it says, beneath this sign was another swaying sign that contained the word vacancy. And then hooked beneath that was an even smaller sign that read one bed. <laughs> so they're there by themselves, Evangeline and Jax. So I am just hoping and praying that something happens because it's like, we can only wait so long, Stephanie. <laughs> but that's also what makes it so good. Um, so yeah, they just arrived there, and I'm assuming they're gonna stay there, and who knows, but Evangeline is starting to remember some things, and she feels that, you know, pull towards Jax that she has pretty much always felt, even though she doesn't really know why she's feeling it in this part of the book, because, you know, what happened to her? which is so annoying. So yeah, I'm just so excited to keep reading. I think I have like a hundred and, I don't know, 70 pages left, something like that. So still a little ways to go, but I'm so sad that I'm gonna be done with this world, probably. We'll see what I think, but I've heard some people say that the ending kind of makes them think that there's gonna be another spinoff series, and I will literally, probably sell my soul for that. I would absolutely 
die because I just love it. I love her and I love this world so much. They're like my favorite books ever. Literally, I just like get goosebumps even just like thinking about it. It's crazy, but that was a lot of talking. I talk a lot in these videos and I'm gonna keep reading and we will see what happens. <laughs> not to read forward or not to read ahead. so busy over Thanksgiving and the holiday so I one haven't had very much time to read and two have just not had time to update you guys and film anything so I apologize but it's been just a second for you guys so it's fine but I'm on page 337 chapter 41 of a Curse for True Love, and we're getting very close to the end. I think it's around 400 pages. I already forgot, and I don't want to look again because I don't want to spoil anything. So, yeah, we have about 60-ish pages left, and since the last time I updated you guys, we've also decorated for Christmas more, so we have lights on and the trees over in that corner, and I love it. I love Christmas so much. So yes, slowly but surely getting through this book. I'm absolutely loving it, like all the other ones. I guess my only complaint would be that there isn't as much Jax and Evangeline scenes as I would like. That's probably my only complaint. Um, I'm still really, really liking it, and I can't wait to finish, but I'm also sad to finish. But yeah, definitely been a slower reading month for me. I think I've read like four books. This will be like the fourth book. But I'm hoping that I can finish this, honestly, maybe even tonight because it's only like 5.30 and I don't have to get up early tomorrow. But yeah, I guess that's my update and we are just going to keep on reading and I will see you guys probably either when I'm done or I'll probably film myself like finishing it. <laughs> Chapter 42. Oh my gosh. No! Oh my gosh. <laughs> that part. So I tab. I feel like I'm going to be tabbing a lot. Oh my gosh. 
That's it. Ooh, it says turn the page for a letter from Stephanie Garber and an exclusive alternate ending. thought while I had my setup and while I was kind of ready for the day I would give you guys a little update I just filmed another video so that's why I am all dolled up but I didn't read like too too much yesterday for these sprints that I was gonna do first of all I didn't realize they were starting when they started because I didn't realize they were Eastern time <laughs> so my bad so I missed like the first hour and I was not feeling good at all. I'm feeling a little better today and I was just like literally falling asleep while reading. So I didn't read as much as I wanted, but I read about 100 pages, I think. I'm on page 179, chapter 19 of Iron Flame and not really much new to say about like what's going on because it's still the first like third of the book I would say, so... It hasn't really gotten to the main part of the book, if that makes sense. You know, the chart that you learn in school when you're like writing a story, it's supposed to have like the climax, the like lead up, the climb, you know, it's still like the lead up, like pretty early on in the lead up, I feel like. So the lead up is interesting and I'm definitely intrigued to see what is going to happen and what the climax is going to be. Probably some sort of like war or something is my guess. There hasn't been too much romance in it, but there are like little breadcrumbs to kind of keep you interested in the romance, so that's good. But I'm gonna try to read more today, of course, since it is pretty early still and it's crazy that I literally have to use like artificial lighting even at two o'clock because it is just so dark here. There's no sun. Yeah, it's just so dark. It's crazy. But that is my update for today. This book is just so big, but I'm getting there. I am getting there. I'm making progress. I feel like once you get to at least a third of the way, you're like, okay, I can do this. So I'll see you guys later with another update. One of my qualms with this book, and even the first one, mostly this one so far, is that there's already been a couple times in the book where there's like just three pages just straight of like their classes. And it's just like the teacher asking them questions and then Violet and the other students answering. And it's like, I don't really care about this information. Like, I know it probably has to do with, like, what's going on in the book. But, like, I just don't care. And it's just like, can we just speed it up a little bit, you know? And I try to skim, but I'm really bad about skimming. Because I just feel like if I miss something, I just have to go back and read it. That's one of the only things so far that I don't love about this book and this series. Also, this book is so heavy and hard to hold. I feel like anything over like 500 pages is where I'm like, okay, I either at least need a paperback or this is why I also think that I need like a Kindle. It's on my Christmas list. Hopefully I get one. I still like reading books physically, but sometimes I just need a break. It's so heavy and I'm not comfortable. Sorry, I'm complaining. Update for you guys on Iron Flame. I am now on page... 294 so I am like pretty much halfway and it is getting crazy the stakes are like really high and there's just so many things coming to light that we obviously didn't know in the first book and there are so many characters in this book that I hate <laughs> but basically overall my thoughts on this book so far I am really liking it Maybe not quite as much as Fourth Wing, but pretty close. It is up there with that book, which is awesome because I love that book and gave it five stars. So I would love for the series to continue on in that direction. I wish you could see my cat right now. <laughs> She's mesmerized by the tree. She's on her little cat tower. 
And you probably can't see my other cat. Oh, there he is. Frodo. They love the Christmas decorations. Time, I think, for some spoilers of this book because a lot has happened, like I said. So, warning, spoilers in a couple seconds. I will put the timer here to when you can skip to. So, guys that have read this book or maybe just want spoilers, I don't know. I am to the part where Violet and her group, Zayden, and who else is down there with her? Honestly, I have no idea how to say her name. Imogen? No, I don't think it's Imogen. Im Imo Imo Imogen? I have no idea. Like, I feel so stupid sometimes <laughs> reading this book because I don't know how to pronounce anyone's name or the dragons like anyway her she's down there and eric i'm assuming that's how to pronounce his name even though it's spelled weird can you just spell it normal but they are down in the archives right now in like the vault and they're trying to get information and if they don't get out soon enough they're gonna die so stressful also we just recently ish probably within the last 60 pages learned that Jack is back. <laughs> he is alive somehow in God's name. I have no idea how he's alive, but he is. Nolan, the healer, mended him somehow. And we all absolutely hated Jack in the first book, but he's decided to become nice and he saved Violet's life. When I tell you when they said that he was alive, I was like, Jog to the floor. What? <laughs> so that was crazy. I'm really enjoying it. I hate to let other people's opinions sway my opinions, and I don't think I have for this book. But I've heard a couple people say that they didn't like this book as much as Fourth Wing. I also saw one of the booktubers that I watch all the time rate it three stars on Goodreads and no explanation, so I have no idea why, but she rated the first one five stars so i was like what that's literally all i've heard slash seen of people's reactions to this book which is good but i so far really liking it it's taking me a while to read but that is okay i think i am on like day five or something <laughs> but you know it's fine this is realistic it's not like a challenge reading these books in a week or something like that so it's just a realistic kind of reading for me. I am definitely gonna keep reading tonight because I'm really interested in what is gonna happen. It is now the weekend, whoop. My goal is no matter what to finish this book this weekend. So you guys better hold me to that. Terrible things. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys hopefully my last update on Iron Flame because I have less than 100 pages left. Oh, I also wanted to tell you guys what this book is about because I'm pretty sure that the clip that I took of me explaining that was deleted on accident. So, my bad. Basically, this series is about this girl, Violet, who has pretty much trained her whole life to go into the scribe quadrant of the war college that the people in this world attend when they're of age like what is it 18 something like that 19 it might be 19 honestly i don't even know how old they are <laughs> somewhere around there and there are what i think there's four quadrants that you can go into in the college and the main character violet has trained her whole life to go into the scribe quadrant and right before she does that her mom who is the general of the college decides that she wants Violet to go into the riders quadrant which is basically where you learn to ride a dragon and all that comes along with that and so she's just not really prepared and she also doesn't she's never really been trained how to like fight and that's a big part of the writer's quadrant so she gets there you know she has to go through a bunch of tests to survive the school basically when she is at the college she meets this guy Zayden who she knows of because her family and his family have had like a long-standing hatred towards pretty much her and Zayden hate each other at the beginning 
because it is an enemies to lovers romance in this book and I personally love enemies to romance in fantasy books specifically honestly I have never read an enemies to lovers romance book I don't really read that many plain romance books so that's not that surprising but I love it in fantasy books it's probably my favorite trope it is done extremely well in these books or in fourth wing I should say and yeah so I can't really explain too much what's going on in this book because obviously it's the second book in the series but it reminds me a lot of especially in the first book of Divergent if you guys have seen the movies or read those books and I love Divergent so my non-spoiler thoughts first of this book so far is that I'm really liking it I thought I would but I'm liking it maybe more than I thought I would I don't know I think a lot of times, isn't there something called like the second book syndrome or something? In like a series, usually the second book is the worst, people think, because, well I don't really know why that is, but I feel like the first book has to be so good to like make you want to read the series, and the second book is more so kind of trying to lead up to what's going to come in the rest of the series, and especially when it has a romance in it, it's kind of hard to keep more of the romance girlies interested which i honestly think a lot of why people maybe didn't like this book as much as fourth wing is because of that reason but i'm really liking it the fantasy in it is really interesting and i still love violet and zayden and we just found out something crazy about zayden i don't know what to think about that but going more into detail with that brings me into some spoiler talk. So skip to whatever time I put on the screen to avoid the spoilers and okay. So what I was just talking about with Zayden, if you guys have read this book, is that he has two, and again, I feel like I said this in the last clip, but I just don't know how to pronounce the words in this book so I'm sorry but we just found out that Zayden has two signets see I don't know how to say the word okay that's how it's spelled so he yeah we just found that out and the second one that he's kept a secret from literally everybody is that he can basically read minds to an extent and Violet is obviously like shooketh and she doesn't know what to think about that but she has said to herself that she isn't necessarily ready to just like call it quits on him just because of that but it is worrisome and i'm just like girl don't break up with him don't you dare break up with him i will say that so far their relationship is definitely not rainbows and butterflies it has had its ups and downs but one of the things that I like about the romance is, and their relationship, is that the communication is, well, I will say the thing I like about Zayden, I guess, is that I feel like he's very healthy in the way that he expects them to like treat each other and to communicate with each other, even though obviously like it's annoying that he like makes her ask him questions instead of just like telling her but I feel like she's the more annoying one in the relationship in this book maybe that's just me but yeah that was a crazy little dump of info and basically they just put the wards up or the ward up in wherever they're staying which is good because the wyvern and the venom were just about well they did come to attack them but the wards helped to keep them away but they just literally on the page the last page i read they just learned that something is wrong with the ward that they just got working so oh no that's not good this is definitely going to get crazy real quick in these last 80 pages but i'm really excited to finish it and see what happens and hopefully the next time i talk to you guys i will be wrapping this video up and just telling you my final thoughts so that's why i stay right here because when all of my dreams seem so out of reach
your crystal clear You don't disappear, baby No So why would I Alright guys, I'm done reading Iron Flame now So I wanted to tell you guys my thoughts on this book and also a curse for true love since that clip got deleted so i guess we'll start with iron flame since i like just finished that one. First of all i think for a rating of this book i'm gonna go with four and a half stars i really really liked it it just didn't give me that five star feeling like fourth wing gave me so that's pretty much the only reason it's not five stars I also think that it was a little bit long, 600 pages, like 620 pages, and that's fine and all, I don't mind long books, but it was just a little bit long. I think even 500 pages like Fourth Wing would have been perfect. With that being said, I don't necessarily think it like dragged on or anything, there weren't any parts where I was bored necessarily even. I feel like the pacing was pretty good, and I really really liked the plot. And I definitely think that it is, you know, gearing up for what is going to happen in the rest of this series. But the ending of this book, I, I don't even know what to say or what to think. I do not know what's going to happen. It's scaring me. <laughs> and I'm just nervous. Yeah, four and a half stars. Really, really liked it. I would say that I wasn't disappointed with it. I think it lived up to the hype, like continued hype, you know, from the first book pretty good so that's my thoughts on that and a curse for true love i also ended up giving four and a half stars actually which again i'm not mad at at all let me take this sticker off real quick well that left a lot of goo gosh dang it usually they come off pretty easily oh well so anyway yeah i was really happy with the ending of this book and just with overall the whole book in general the reason for this book not being a five stars is because of some specific reasons i will say that there was one character that we got a lot of that i didn't necessarily love and i can't say because it's a spoiler but i think if you've read this book you know exactly who i'm talking about and then the other thing and this is probably the main reason is because i just feel like we didn't get that much of evangeline and jacks together like scenes of them together which is a huge bummer because that's i think what really made people fall in love with this series definitely me included was their relationship and seeing them come together and i feel like i can count on like one hand how many not scenes that we got of them together but like notable ones i would say where it showed us kind of their relationship i guess specifically the scene of them at the inn loved that one and i just wish we got more scenes like that of them together so that's the main reason this is only a four and a half i was even gonna go with like a 4.75 but i just think that i feel like at the heart of this series it's a romance series yes it's also fantasy but it mainly focuses on you know jackson evangeline and to not get very much Jackson Evangeline content in this book. I feel like that just brings the rating down. So I went with four and a half stars, but still absolutely will recommend this series to everyone. I think everyone should read it. And The Ballad of Never After the second book is probably gonna be my favorite book of 2023, to be honest. I just love it so much. Yeah, I think that these books were a success. I really, really, really loved both of them and I'm glad that I read them and finished this series. I'm caught up on this one now. I can't wait to continue this one when the next book comes out, which is I think is gonna be like next December, I think I heard, a year from now. So I'm excited for that. It's gonna be a long wait, but that's okay. So yeah, with that being said, you guys, that is the end of this video. If you haven't read these books or series yet, I think you should definitely read them. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!